I'd like to thank those that have been praying for me in my cat-wounded leg. <laughs> I pray that you continue to keep me in your prayers. I'm still having problems with it. I'll probably have to go back to the doctor. So I'm going to sing, Yes, I Know, and I hope you receive a blessing from it. <coughs> Jesus' blood can make you free, for he saved the worst among you. When he saved a wretch like me, and I know, yes, I know. Jesus blood can make the vilest sinner clean and I know yes I know Jesus blood can make the vilest sinner clean to the faint he giveth power through the mountains makes a way Findeth water in the desert Turns the night to golden day And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean In temptation He is near thee powers of hell at bay guide you to the path of safety gives you grace for every day and I know yes I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. It's the blood of Jesus can make you
Amen. Monterey does good. You're a good singer. Good morning. Good morning. And Harold, a lot of things he did at Sunday school is the same we'll talk about, Lord willing. But, uh, and I did hear from Pastor again this morning. He texted me a couple times and said, praying for you, bro. Give everybody my love. <laughs> and uh, he, then he sent me another one, and I just, too much info, I'll tell you again, though. He said, and I'm praying extra for you because don't you have a nursing home too today? <laughs> but amen, it is a blessing. And uh, we are praying for him. And as John said, he is there and getting down there. And things are going good. And it is a blessing for him to be able to get out for a while because he does so much for us. And uh, I am, uh, a lot of you know, and even the devil has put so many things through me that wouldn't want me to do things. And but I still try to do everything I can. And I want to talk about, as we've all mentioned, is keeping faith in hard times, etc. Amen? So I'm going to read that, and then we got some Bible, some definitely go through the Bible, but let's have a word of prayer, and then I'll get started some more. Dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for uh, each and every day and each and every breath, Lord, and I thank you for your Son, and do pray for His return, Lord, and uh, Thank you for uh, Pastor and his wife as they get to take a vacation and with family and pray things continue to go safe and properly and have a blessed time and lift up all those that are filling in and helping do things for him, Sunday school and evening service, Sunday mornings, all of them, John tonight, and pray be with them all and we can all do a Lord willing, do a good job for you and we do pray you forgive us where we fail you and that we can move forward and do things faithful, and do the right things for you, and we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory, Father, in thy loving Son's name we pray, amen. amen. And yeah, is uh, keeping faithful, it's not always, Pastor will tell us, it's not always the easiest thing to do, but it is what we want to do, right? And I thank you, as Monterey said, everybody for prayers, and to continue to pray, because Still blessed to be around, we are. But uh, there's like, keeping faith sometimes is hard. Some problems, trials knock out your heart or surround us. Temptations set in and hoping we'll feel the pressure, but etc. And trials, not also just that, but it's like quality, prior, things that happen to us. You know what I mean. A lot of things that do, a lot of problems. But hoping we'll feel the pressure, etc., that's the world. But some tough times come right after a moment of joy. Or sometimes, like you think you just had victory and everything's going good, and then something else will come back. Just the way the world is, and you all know that. But sometimes we may even toss and turn at night. And I know my wife does. <laughs> toss and turn at night. You're wondering how or why you think, you know, Work goes through their way into your thoughts, into dreams. Do we all have that? And I even mentioned like uh, where I work, people say, this is a dream. And I tell them, yeah, my wife tells me when she has a nightmare it was a dream. But, you know, and I'm just kidding with them because I've told you before up here, we try to get with all the folks. A lot of people say they know the Lord, but they'll swear, they'll do things, and I try to get with them. But even if we have dreams and stuff, sometimes... We don't know what it's all about. But it does start to feel better a lot of times for like struggling, hit things, etc. happen to us, being fired at us, and not just bullets, that's what they mean, but a lot of things go towards us that we don't want to hear, right? I mean, things we don't want to hear, we don't want done, a lot of that does happen. But uh, it gives us struggling and hard times, but being fired at us, like I said, things that get made exhaustingly, not just fired at us, just some problems, some things happening on our minds. But, and this is a way of life in the world, amen? Like you mentioned, the devil, the world, the way things happen. But, and it acts, it becomes, but it requires is to be continuous, an active choice of choosing God, amen? And keep keeping faith after knowing Him to and I say I'm sorry because it's too much to move ahead and hope rather than despair, but not to lose or get small. We don't lose our hope, right? Do we always have hope if you know the Lord? Yes. Amen. You should always have it, though, because even with everything we're going through, there is better days ahead. It can be the, 
the battle of living by faith. I've had to do this over and over again. And unfortunately, I've had a, you know, Pastor and I get a lot, we work out and stuff, a lot of things, but I've had temptation work into my mind. But I pray every day a lot and have thanked the Lord that I don't follow through with temptations that you get. And isn't that a blessing? I mean, we all get temptations and things. And I believe, though, that there is a lot of hope ahead. Because knowing the Lord, Jesus Christ, is the best shepherd, etc. The best thing. And uh, when we ask Him into our heart, as a lot of people say, He showers us with His unconditional love, devotion, and He'll never leave us, as He said. I mean, He will never leave us. He even sees us, whether we start over and over again and again. He sees it all. He sees us struggle. He sees our desires. But... We grow closer to God is what we try to do. Grow closer and closer to God. He is always with us if we're saved. Amen. And we have nothing to really fear if we're knowing God. I know I've had things and a lot of you guys had problems and things you fear or feel about that's not great. But if you know God, like I say, I look forward to better days ahead. Like keeping faith. I mean, that's what we all say, but is it that easy to do? And I drink about 80 of these a day minimum. <laughs> That's what I was told by the doctors. But uh, keeping faith and going to faith and really living by faith is the issue. Is it about the free and the best choice of us to trust God and choose His way over and over? Over and over our own ways and our thoughts sometimes about keeping faith is not just times of peace. But all the times life feels, or a lot of the times, doesn't life feel rough? I mean, it feels rough, etc. But if you get back to faith, and I love to say, I get this right all the time. But I don't. Well, not 100%. I mean, it's, it's great though that we have the pastor, we have all the family, the church. But it is. I would love to say that it's right all the time, but I don't. And I want to, and I told, and I've said... We are blessed to still be around, to still be alive, etc. In fact, we have faith, but as living lives, at times we feel trials, temptations, and each situation, it seems, we could see problems, right? But we can see problems clear enough to choose otherwise. We could see there is a way out. And how is that way out? The Lord. The, knowing the Lord is the main thing. But temptations... They blow over and over in this world. It just does. I mean, over and over. But faith fools and saved, we can stay strong in the Lord's way, in His Word, as you mentioned. In His Word, stay in His Word. Even, and mean even especially, we mostly desire and are to live in God's way. And that is the way we want to do it. And like I said, it would be great to be that way all the time, but it's not that easy. But battles attempt to set problems, temptations, etc. on our minds. And Lord willing, if I do another message, I, I talk to pastor, we talk a lot. But that's another thing I, I, I got all kinds of the Lord put on me is about things that you shouldn't do that you get on your mind. But go to Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians. Number one, you see, I don't even have it. First Corinthians, number 10, I believe. And there's a lot of verses and stuff and things we can go through. But the main thing is, is read the Lord's Word, try to do things for the Lord, and just try to be faithful because we are still blessed to be around. And uh, let me get my pen out here so I can mark my... But 1 Corinthians 10, and there's only like one verse I'm going to read there. Verse 13, which we've read, and you know, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be also or able to bear it. Amen? There's ways, that's why we can bear it. And then... Uh, James chapter 1, which is on back there. 
And a lot of you know me, and I told Bob, I said, well, he said, hope you do everything on your mind. I said, yeah, and even a nursing home would have to be there till 3. He said, and he just said, oh, I know how that is. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. But James chapter 1, and just a couple more, you know, verses. We have a lot of them, but a lot we'll just read. But James 1, verse like 2 and 3. See, and I'm already at 2. <laughs> Brethren, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall in divers temptations. And that's, we all fall into that. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And we all know patience, right? Don't you remember? We'll talk about Phil when we mention patience. And I tease people. And I tease him. But it's a blessing to get patience. Because if we didn't have any patience, where would we be? Well, you know, you remember what I say? Well, we can make it one. But I'm just kidding them. And the patience is a good thing to have. And it's another thing in this world and the devil puts on us that is hard to do. But it is the best thing to be faithful and have patience. I mean, spiritual battles begin keeping our faith in God means and helps everything. Like I said, why we're still around and everything else. If it wasn't for the Lord, how would it be? It would be miserable. Really miserable. Not as I say miserably fine. It would be miserable. It would be bad. But we read some more verses and stuff. But keeping faith when we're even feeling weak, etc. is the main thing. Like go to Psalms uh, 27. And I have a lot of things to say, but we'll still, Lord willing, get out of here at a decent time. But like I say, the main thing is to try to, as even he said at Sunday school, read the Lord's Word. Try to be with the Lord. Do the right things. Be faithful. But uh, Psalms 27, verse 1, I'll start and I'll read a few there. But it's like, uh, the Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And really none. I mean, you can, but when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes come upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell, he says. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. As He said, we look forward to that. You know, we go to heaven. If we do the right things and we're saved, we're all going there. Amen? Amen. I mean, that is what it's all about. And it is. It's, it's a blessing. It really is. And that's like I said, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is strength in my life. And whom? And too much info too, but I'll tell you that. I'm at, I'm at work, a bunch of really big guys trying to tease me and stuff, you know. And I told them, I said, well, you know where I'm going. And they said, oh, you're working out with that Bradster guy, our pastor, aren't you? I said, yeah, I work out with him. He's taught me kung fu and different things. They went, never mind, we won't bug you then. I said, well, okay, do you know the Lord? And a lot of them, I told you that, they say they do, but then they'll swear and stuff. And I say, hey, yeah, try to be faithful and do the right things. We're not all 100%, but try to do the best you can. Okay, but since you know all that stuff, we're not bugging you no more. All right. I told Bob that. Bob that and he says, oh, cool. <laughs> and, and it is. It was, it's, that was a blessing too. I mean, but uh, like I said, there's quite a few verses here, but it's all about being faithful. Amen? I mean, and we're reading the Word. Like Psalms, uh, while we're there, 105. Which I'd tell you the page, but I keep this book that I get from Seedline. And I'm going to get more. Brother Dave knows that. The one's about motorcycles and stuff. And I think I've told you, I gave people these. And they said, oh, I'll read that. And do you know the Lord? No, how can I do that? So I've read it to them, showed them through this, and they come to know the Lord. And that is a blessing to be able to give them a bike Bible. And, but the main thing is, come to know the Lord. But Psalms 105, like 1 through 4, is, Go, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among this people, these people, the people. 
Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous, wonderful works. You know, wondrous work. Everything he does is wondrous for us. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. And we even get them to seek the Lord if they don't, as we've mentioned. Get them to seek the Lord, which is a blessing too. And seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. And that's something you main course is knowing the Lord. Okay, then we go to Romans 5, and it won't be hundreds of verses or nothing. But it is, if we didn't know the Lord and everybody here didn't pray for us and stuff, it wasn't for prayer, where would we be? We'd be in trouble. We'd be in, I always said, in jail or... <laughs> but Romans 5, and I'm going to read a lot of these, but we're going to move right forward. It's like uh, 1 and 2, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of the God. And amen. That's faith and grace. Rejoice. Be glad. Be happy. Have hope. Bless you. Have hope. Glory. Honor God. That's the main thing. Glad and happy is by doing God's work, reading God's word. Amen? It is. And verse 3 is, you know... And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And there we go with patience. Suffering, tribulation, etc. We'll try a lot, but it gives us patience. And that is a blessing. Because so if we didn't have the patience and we didn't know the Lord, the things we would do would be crazy. I mean, it really would. So we are to be calm and patient. And I won't repeat the patience story. You know, but that's something we should have and we try to have is patience. And then in patience and experience and hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And that's why we have to have hope, have faith. No matter what gets on our minds, our lives, we have, and you know Him, you have what? The Holy Ghost, God, Jesus given to us. Amen? Salvation. Always say that that is the main course. The main item. I even tell them like if you're eating a meal, the main item is salvation, even if you pray about it and stuff. And too much info, but where I was at 26 years, the people there called me that had been there, that, that was a plant manager, and they removed him, made him engineer, which he said was weird. But they called me and asked me to meet a couple of them for dinner. And I did, and it went a long time. But naturally, you know what they said? Phil, can you at least open in prayer before we do all this? And I said, amen. That's a blessing that we even do that. And it really was. It was a blessing. But uh, when we're at verse 6, For when we were yet without strength in the due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Pastors told us that a lot, Amen. That he's died for all. God died for all. But as said, the main course. All need to accept the Lord. Jesus, get salvation. Know and be proper. For the Lord don't lose nothing. But we need to do the best we can for him. Because he's always with us. He, talking about faithful, I mean, I wish we could, we could never be as faithful as the Lord is to us. But we can do the best we can. And that's what we try to do is... And in seven, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But good commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for all of us. And pastor has told us that a lot, and that is true. Scarcely is most of all of us. Hardly any would die for others, would you? You know? I mean, some like... My wife and I have talked. She said, some people might do it for their family if something like that had to happen. But some may for the family, etc. But none would or could do like Jesus did for us. I mean, that was the main course. I mean, he died for us. And you all know me, but 
I said, well, I wouldn't even let my dad, dog die for some people. Because, but the Lord died for us. That is the main course that we got salvation. Because we're all, we were all sinners, and we still are. I mean, like verse 9 is quick, but much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. We are saved from intense anger, vengeance. We're saved from all of that if we do the right things. I mean, and that's, that's why I say maybe my next message is going to be more about that, like vengeance and things, things you're not supposed to do, but yet the devil, the Lord, puts it on your mind. But if you know the Lord, you don't do those things. Anyway, we're at verse 10. See, but some of them, then I'm going to read all of them, so we're definitely moving. For if we were... Enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Redeeming, renewing, right? Renewed us. Were we not all that way at one time? I mean, I run into people and too much info again, but my wife would tell you and pastor too, at one time uh, nursing home people and things asked me to do funerals. Wow. And I know I told you guys, I think, and then they paid me so much that I told both him and the pastor that how much they paid me. And they said, well, I didn't pay us that much. I said, good, that's the job I'll get. <laughs> but, but it was a blessing because try to do the right things, which we don't always do, but try to do them. I mean, and that is redeeming, renewing us, which Jesus did. And we can all get joy by knowing the Lord, by knowing Jesus. We are as another one, as a broken record is, whooped. and I reminded uh, Pastor of that because my memory is not what it used to be, but I do remember he always told me what? We are too blessed to be stressed. And I used to tease him, go backwards, say, oh, I don't know, I think I'm too stressed to be blessed. No, you're not. <laughs> we are. We are blessed, too blessed to be stressed. And 12 is, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And, you know, we still do sin. But pastor has told us that. But with salvation and being saved, we'll not lose our salvation. Amen? Even if we, we sin. I mean, it's not something we do on purpose, but it happens. And do our best and can and really look forward to heaven. I mean, we really do. And that's, again, as Lois, you know, I call her Lois. But as you know, the nursing home, and I've said before, like a breaking record because I tell everybody, I pray for the Lord's return because we really look forward to that. And the one lady, and there's my memory, my wife reminded me of the name, but I, I'd say that being a broken record but praying for the Lord and go through verses and they go, no, you're not a broken record. We appreciate that because if the Lord comes back, we're not going to go through all that, the death and everything else, which is a blessing. Jesus' return is something we look forward to. We all know that. And for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. And that just means, no, they never charged or made a law just about sin. They didn't do that. But, we direct, directly you're not supposed to do all the sin, but they're not, you can look at the laws. And you know, Paul, or Bob, he, he wrote for, worked for the county and all that. He knows the laws, but we and him agreed on that. There's not just a law about sin. We all do a little sin. But then, let me, I'll read like 14 through away, Sarah. <laughs> but it is blessed, I, I, you know, I know, but to have another day and all be here and prayers and stuff, we are blessed. But like 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the Smellitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And we talk about that. But unto many he has. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if one man's offense, death re resigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. 
And He's the only one, as I said, that can do that. And we're blessed to know Him. Only abundance, grace, quantity is by only one way. To get which is Jesus, which did give His life for us. As I said, nobody else would do that. And they couldn't. Even if they wanted to give their life, it would not do what the Lord has gave us and done for us. But to give His life for our salvation, our eternal life. As you mentioned, eternal life is something, you know, we got a blessing to look forward to. To get grace, glory, blessed to still be around, to, to know better days ahead. And that's what I tell a lot of people. With everything we're going through, there's better days ahead. We look forward to that. And there is, by eternal life, a song. We're going to go to heaven. And then 18 through. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. And that's like I always say, a lot of people that don't read the Bible or one another, how come it just says men, Phil? Well, it means everybody. You know, it means ladies too. And they're like, oh, okay. But that is, you, you guys know that. But it is a free gift come up on all men on the justification of life. For as by one man disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Righteousness, that's what we look forward and we got, righteous. Moreover, the law entered that one or that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And that is a blessing. Then last 21 there is that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And all those verses there is condemnation, judgment by one. And that's the Lord. They'll receive the free gift of righteousness. Excuse me. Like I'm on burp. Of righteousness. But disobedience is like refusing to hear, etc. of the Lord Jesus. And we get that. But which many make sinners. But by being saved and trying to keep in faith is doing things proper. Amen? Trying to do things proper. Because we get saved, read His Word, try to do what we can, and just share it as, as He says in science. Share it with others. The Word, the things, the Lord, which is a blessing. And, but by being saved and trying to keep in faith, doing those things proper... Because then we can all be righteous. And grace is much more better than the law, the sin, as we talk about, the devil, etc. You know, like it says right there, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's what it is. And we have a few more. We'll finish up. Let's go to Isaiah 41. Very similar. These are verses that even when I go to the store to get the, if I have to get a medicine, I'll say, do you have memory? What do you mean? <laughs> Something for memory. But Isaiah 41, which is right past Proverbs, which I think I went too far. Isaiah 41, which is some verses that I know we've all heard. I believe my wife's read. But we'll just read like verse 41. Let's read like 10 and maybe 13. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am the, thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness. In 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. So we're blessed to know the Lord and to try to be faithful and do what we can. Amen? And then Psalms, where was that? Psalms 23. And it's not real big, but you get there, I'll read that and But it is, like I say, it's just a blessing to try to do the things for the Lord. And not just each and every day, we're not perfect, but we are blessed to be saved. Amen? That is it. That is the biggest thing. But Psalms 23 is, the Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. And He did. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. But surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And that's, that's what we say. We will be there forever. And that's what I say. I pray for the Lord's return, especially as we lose friends, family, and we want other people to come and know the Lord. And uh, as we will be, it's getting close to noon and we're about done. But uh, go to Titus. Let's clear back in the back there, headed towards Revelation, but not that far. Right after 2 Timothy, just before Hebrews. But it is, and I, I say it, it's a blessing for us to still be around and still be able to share His Word with anybody because it is blessed to know the Lord and look forward to heaven. Because we are blessed to still be here in this world, but with everything going on, I know a lot of people, we look forward to it. We look forward to heaven. And Titus chapter 2 And I think I'll read like 11 through since it's not that late. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, to all people. It's, it's a, everybody could do it, amen? I mean, that's why brother says we need to share the word with them. Let them know that that's what you need to do. Teaching us that denying ungoodness, godliness, and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope, and that is definitely, who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity and provide unto Himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak, exhort, rebuke with all authority, let no man despise thee. In other words, don't let no man do that to you. Do the wrong things to you. You want to try to share the good things. And that's what I say, Lord willing, you know, it's getting there about noon, but Lord willing, if I am still blessed and everything and do the next message, it's about things like that, where we don't want guys to despise us. But, as me and Bob, brother, pastor always tells us, you do the right things. You don't go through things that may come on your mind. And me and him talk about that even when we're working out and stuff. It's, we're blessed. And others are blessed that we don't. But that would be a whole nother message. But that is the thing. The main thing is we want to try to be faithful, share the Lord's Word. And if there is, probably nobody, nobody's new today, but if there's ever amongst anybody that needs prayer here today, or need to be saved or anything, after a Adolph, come on up and we'll sing that song. But anytime you want, anybody wants to, come on up. I'll pray with you. A deacon will come up and pray with you. Whatever we have to do as a blessing to be still around. And for the Lord's return is a blessing too. But we don't know when that will happen. But it seems like it will be soon. Amen. But come on up. We'll pray if you want to. We'll close out with prayer in a little while. We'll do what we have to to be a blessing. Thank you. Let me have a little word of prayer too right now. Dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, I do thank You for another day and each and every day and each and every breath. Do pray if there be one amongst us that doesn't know You or needs prayer requests as we pray for Pastor and his wife have and we still do. I told him every day and he said amen and give it love. But we pray He has a blessed, they have a blessed, safe, good time from not being here to visiting family and traveling around and things go well for them. And I lift up all those that need lifted up spiritually and physically, Lord. 
And just again, thank you for your word and for each and every blessing, Lord, and ask forgive us where we fail you. And if one needs prayer or needs to be saved, they come on up and we'll pray with them. And we thank you, though, Father, for each and every day and most of all for your son. And do pray for his return. In thy loving son's name we pray. Amen. All right, bro. Thank you.